Hi everyone. Uh, this is going to be a brief overview of the AppScale semantic layer platform. So first, a definition of what a semantic layer is. A semantic layer is a business friendly layer that sits on top of your data platforms. Uh, and that means that business friendly means that uh, we're talking about uh, common business terms like product, customer, and revenue. So uh, your consumers don't have to understand where the data came from or how it's structured. They just deal with the data in their own business terms. So a semantic layer makes uh, data more accessible to more people because there's less skills required for those uh, consumers to get access to the data and ask their questions. So the AtScale semantic layer plat platform has four key services. So it sits in between your data consumption, which you see on the right, and all your different tools and all your different personas who need access to um, good, clean data and your data platforms that sit in the cloud. Uh, the metric store is the interface, uh, that business friendly interface that puts that, that technical data in business terms. There's a data modeling tool that the uh, that data stewards use to be able to translate the physical data into something that's more approachable to business users. And that becomes a semantic model. And then the semantic layer also tunes and speeds queries so that the queries are as fast as the speed of thought and it does that automatically and then finally there's governance like row level security column level security and masking so that only people get to see the data that they're supposed to see so the uh the, there's two parts of uh the semantic layer platform for at scale the first is that semantic model and the semantic model is what creates a business friendly interface. And I'm going to show you that demo in just a few minutes and show you how that semantic model gets built. And then you have the consumption through the metric store. Um, and you can see in this case, there's a single source of truth for, uh, for that, that, that business layer. And you can see that it's, it, it, it presents itself in the same terms. So order quantity is always order quantity, sales amount is always sales amount, um, and tax is always tax, regardless of whether you're consuming data in Excel, Power BI, Looker, Tableau, or even a Jupyter Notebook, and much, much more. So the whole point here is that, uh, that the at-scale semantic layer speaks in the natural language, the natural dialect of the tools. And that's really important because that means that your consumers are not going to have to sacrifice the power or ease of use of their consumption tools. They use it just like they're connected to live data. So um, what does this mean? Well, once you have a semantic model built off of semantic objects, you can do some really great things in terms of decentralizing your data product creation. In this example, we have a center of excellence, which you see in the lower right, and then you see we have three different business groups of finance, sales, and marketing. So with this sort of model and this sort of organization, the center of excellence, for example, can create a semantic time object. That time object or dimension could then be used by the marketing team. The marketing team can create and curate their own campaign dimension because, of course, marketing folks run on campaigns. With that, they combine the time, the time object and the campaign object to create a campaign model. And the same thing can happen with sales and sales ops and sales ops model. Of course, the finance team is owning um, uh, anything finance, including costs. And then finally, you can mash those up, for example, to create a campaign ROI model that would combine the campaign model and the cost model from finance. So what this means is that you can create semantic objects and share those across different business domains and have that same sort of object-oriented power of hiding the complexity of, of the definitions and allowing the different teams to collaborate using the same language. So the AtScale semantic uh, engine sits in between your data platforms and your, uh, your consumption tools. So let's go ahead and look at that now. Okay, so let's get started. So what you're seeing here is in our browser is AtScale Design Center. AtScale Design Center is your IDE for creating semantic objects and semantic models. 
You're looking right here at the internet sales semantic model, which is made up of data sets and dimensions uh, with relationships indicated by the orange lines. So what you're seeing over here is that you're seeing our repository browser. So we can have a selection of repositories and branches. So you can collaborate and work together just like you do with software um, and work on branches as you build these semantic objects and you share them across the enterprise. Our source of truth is Git. Um, so everything is represented as an object and as a file. So let's, let me show you how it all works by creating a new model from scratch. So we're going to create a new model um, and we're going to call it the retail model. And we're going to apply that. What you see here is we have our retail model. Uh, now there's nothing on our canvas yet. So let's go and let's add some data. So I'm going to go into our, our, our data panel here. Uh, and this is all this what we've connected to at scale design center. And I'm going to go ahead and add to my model, um, my internet sales fact table. So there you have it. Um, and I have a lot of data in here and I'm going to go ahead and add in uh, a couple measures. So I'm going to do order quantity and sales. So I'm going to go ahead and add those. And I can do this in bulk. So order quantity and sales will be the label for my consumers. And I'm going to create sales metrics as a folder because I want them to be organized easily for my users to find. So all I need to do is create. And if I look at the text side, there you go. There's my two, my two metrics. That's not very interesting because we need some dimensional data to look at this data by. So let's go ahead and use and reuse and go back to our library here. Um, and, and look at our dimensions folder where we have a bunch of dimension objects here. Well, I definitely want to uh, add in um, uh, a couple dimensions. I definitely want my product dimension because I want to look at everything by product. I definitely want to look at my customer dimension. Customers are always first. And I want to also look at um, everything by time, of course. So all I need to do is just say add to model and it brings them onto my canvas. Now, the only thing I need to do is create a relationship between these dimensions and this fact table. And I can do that simply by um, dragging and dropping. So you can see there's my, uh, my relationship for product. Here's my relationship for customer. And here's, uh, oops, I have a couple dates. I have an order, order dates and I have ship dates. So let's create a role playing dimension. So I'm going to go ahead and create an order date and I'm going to go ahead and create a ship date. So just like that, you can see now I have role plays. So if I go and look at my preview in my preview now, there's my two metrics and here are my different dates. And you can see I have order dates and ship date hierarchies. It does it for me. Look at all the, the customer information that came in. It all came in because customer is an object that contains other objects. You can have encapsulation, just like you do with object-oriented programming and regular software code. If I look at my text editor view, you can see it's fully built out here. So I don't need to write code. I can go ahead and visually build uh, my models, just like you saw here, um, and the code generate is generated for me. Okay, so um, what I also can see is in my source code control browser, I can now see that I have um, my different uh, files that are created that are ready for source code control. But before I check those into my Git repository for others to share, I'm just going to go ahead and deploy the model so I can actually test it myself. So now my model has been deployed, and now I'm ready to, uh, to actually explore it. So let's explore it with some tools. So there you see, there's, re there's the retail model. And I'm gonna first look at my retail model um, and explore it with um, Tableau. Now what we're doing is we're connecting to Tableau uh, using SQL. Why? Because Tableau prefers SQL uh, to um, any interface. And I'm not gonna have to remodel my data in, uh, in Tableau. It automatically comes in already pre-organized just like I did in my folders. And there we go, there's my order quantity. Um, and remember we created our product, uh, our product uh, hierarchy. There's my data by product line, category, um, and by the product itself. Uh, you remember we had our, um, our dates. Remember we had our two different types of dates, order dates and ship dates. And you remember we had them in the hierarchies. So this is really an OLAP experience, but without an OLAP engine, this is all real-time data 
uh, real-time queries going to my uh, data platform, Postgres in this case. So let's go ahead and let's look at what the experience uh, feels like for an Excel user. So for Excel, I'm going to go ahead and um, connect uh, using the built-in analysis services connector. So this is very um, unique to at scale because uh, we have our um, because we emulate analysis services or Power BI Premium. It means that we can um, actually uh, connect directly using the native built-in tools. So you can see here is my SML models D Mariani. That's my branch. And now I'm looking at the retail model. Now it appears as a cube uh, in my live pivot tables. And just like that, I can go ahead and just point and click. Again, no reason to dump data, no reason to uh, remodel data. I can look at my geographies and I can go ahead and drill down to my heart's content. Um, and it's instantaneous. I can also use all of the functionality uh, within Excel to example, for example, to turn these, uh, these, that pivot table into individual cells. You can't do this with an add-in. Uh, so I can embed these cells of data, these cube values anywhere in my, uh, in my, uh, my workbook. And all I need to do is do a refresh and it's that fast to refresh that data. Okay. So, um, how about, um, how about Power BI? So let's go and let's see what the experience looks like in Power BI. So Power BI has the, the same connection, analysis services, and I'm going to connect now through DAX. So I'm going to go ahead and paste then paste in that, um, I'll go ahead and, and capture that back here and paste in my URL and, uh, and go ahead and log in. You can notice I'm connecting live. Um, and I'm connecting live. So this is all through DAX. So I get to use the, the full experience of um, Power BI uh, without any compromises. And you can see there's my models and I'm gonna go ahead and load up the, the retail model. So uh, what you're seeing here now, you can see it's now a live connection. And there you go, there's my retail model. And then my retail model, again, the, the, I have the same view of those metrics the same view of my um, of my uh, my product dimension and the like, and all I need to do is uh, is is uh, check on what I want. I don't need to remodel the data, and it's that fast. If I come to the model tab, you'll notice that the data has already been modeled for me, and it's inherited the the model in Power BI. Why? Because AppScale speaks DAX, and that's the native language of Power BI. You can also notice that I can do new calculations and the like, um, and because we speak DAX. So if I look back and um, come back to my design center experience here, and I look at my queries, uh, you can see that I have a number of different queries here, and you can see that we actually translated those queries, in this case, into Postgres. If I go and I look at my aggregates log here, you can see that at scale created aggregate tables automatically just in that in that session that you saw right here. That means that at scale is speeding those queries and that's why they're so fast. So I hope this gave you a really sort of good view of just how powerful um, does um, at scale's semantic layer platform can be and how it can be, it be, be really useful to collaborate um, and build whether you like to build with um, a visual um, a visually, uh, with an application or whether you like to use code. Thanks a lot.